double net means your network traffic is translated by two routers doing net in sequence. In most cases, it's not really causing real world problem, but in some cases, it may lead to a lot of issues. For example, it will break inbound connections. If you host server in your private network, the inbound traffic will fail unless you set up port forwarding twice in both routers. It will complicate port forwarding. And when it comes to UPnP, normally it only works with one layer of net. Double net will break it. It may break P2P or gaming connections. And because of the extra net, the latency and the complexity will be increased. And many VPN won't work in double net situation. And for tunneling, for example, if you need hairpin net to work, it may have issue. And if you have home lab, you will understand what's the very last point. Okay. In this video, we will not discuss how to resolve the double net issue. Instead, we are discussing how you can even detect double net situation. Let me use different setups to show you three different situations where you may have double net. First, it's a very common case. You got a modem from your ISP. The modem also comes with trash level Wi-Fi functionality. By default, it works in router mode, which means if you hook up the the one part of your internet gateway to the modem, you will receive private IP address. The modem and your own gateway will do double net. To resolve it, you need to call your ISP. Simply let them know you want to set your modem to bridge mode. If the modem supports bridge mode, by the way, some don't. If the person who answers your call knows what you're talking about, they can do that in several minutes. Then your own internet gateway will receive public IP address on the one part. And for this setup to detect whether you have double net or not, you simply check the one part IP address is private, then you have double net. The second setup, so you receive a box from your ISP. You hook it up, you find the IP address you receive is not public IP address. You call them, they have no way to change it. Why? Because the ISP uses CGNet. CGNet stands for carrier grade net. It is used by ISP in IPv4 network design. For this type of setup, unfortunately, you have no way to change anything. You have to accept the fact that you will have double net if you want to use your own router slash gateway. Of course, for example, if you directly hook up your gaming console to the ISP's black box, of course, you won't have double net. But do you want to do that? I don't know. For this type of setup to detect double net is the same as the first setup. So you simply check the one part IP address. So next is what we want to focus on in this video. You have your own home lab. You have multiple routers or gateways. For your first layer of router, it receives public IP. Then you hook up your another routers to the LAN. Then you can mess around with your home lab. In this particular example, which I'm going to use in this video, it's even worse because I have three layers of routers, which means I have triple net, not just double net. So let me use this setup. Let's discuss how we can detect we have double net situation or not. To confirm whether you have double net situation, normally there are two recommended ways. First, by comparing the one part IP address and your public IP address. The second approach is to do trace route. So let's talk about them one by one. In the end, you will be surprised because neither of them is reliable. So let's talk about the first one. Compare the public IP address and your one part IP address. For this approach, you immediately face two challenges. First, 
how to get your public IP address. Second, how to get your one part IP address. If you are a admin, you have full control of your network stacks. Of course, you can easily get the public IP address and the one part IP address. So for example, if I go to this middle UX3 Pro for Unify Gateway, go to the primary one part, you can see I set it to static IP and this is the main IP address right this is the one part IP address and if I go to the lower part UDM Pro even though here for the primary one part I set it to DHCP from the overview page I can still get the primary one part IP address in the diagram I already noted down the one part IP addresses for the three unified gateways but keep in mind I can do that because I'm able to access the unified networks management UI, but what if you do not have access? You only have a client running in the LAN. How you can find out the answer? So let me show you the command line way from a client. First, to find out the public IP address of the most outer gateway. By the way, you can easily go to the web to find out your public IP address, but let me show you the CRI way. So I'm going to use a STAN client. In this screen, I show you the GitHub site for the STAN server. So the STAN client comes with this server. And in this VLAN 100 Linux client, I have already compiled the STAN server. So let me run the STAN client. I'm using this Google's STAN server using this port number. Let me run the STAN client. Okay, here it tells me the local IP address and the mapped IP address. The mapped IP address is the public IP address, which is identified by the remote stand server. In this case, by the Google server. This is how you can find out the public IP address, no matter how many layers or how many nets you have in your environment. Then let's talk about how to find out the one part IP address. This is very tricky. I am only aware of a way, which is to use the net PMP protocol supported by UPnP. So you can see in the lowest layer Unified Gateway, the UDM Pro, for the primary one part, I can enable UPnP and I make sure I include the VLAN 100 because the left side Linux client is in VLAN 100, right? Then I make sure I enable this net PMP option, then apply changes. Then in the left side Linux client, let me run command net PMPC. It is a PMP client. It is supposed to return the external IP address. In this case, I enabled UPnP for this unified gateway. I am supposed to get the external IP address for this gateway. Let me run it. Yes, so you can see it's a successful. And here, even though it says public IP address, you know it's not. This gateway is behind another gateway, right? What we get is not really public IP address, it's just the external IP address. You can see answer is correct. That's exactly my one part IP address. So in this way, I'm able to get the one part IP address for a given gateway, but only if UPnP is enabled. If I go back to UDM Pro, let me disable UPnP, apply changes, then in the Linux machine, run the net PMPC command again, different result. It cannot get the external IP address because the gateway does not support net PMP connection refused. So if you don't have access to the management UI of your gateway, you may or may not have problem to get the one part IP address. But let's assume you successfully get both information, the public IP address and then one part IP address of each gateway in your network, even if you get everything. Are you really able to tell whether you have double net? The answer is still no. 
just by checking the different one parts IP addresses of these three unified gateways, you may draw a conclusion that yes, now we have double net situation. In this case, it's even triple net. You assume for each unified gateway, it run masquerade net because you have three gateways. That's why you have triple net, right? So we can confirm whether the conclusion is correct or not by running Wireshark. In the right side, you can see two Wireshark's, right? They are capturing the one part traffic for these two inner gateways. So let me start capturing the upper one. I'm going to use it to capture the UDM Pro's one part. I'm going to use SSH remote capture. So I'm connecting to the UDM Pro. For capture option, I want to capture all the interfaces, but I'm only interested in 9999. Start capturing. And then in the lower part, Wireshark, I'm connecting to this UXG Pro. In the same way, I want to capture all the interfaces, but I'm only interested in 9999. Start capturing. Okay, so then in the left side, VLAN 100 Linux machine, which is located in the LAN of the UDM Pro, right? Let me ping 9999. Just ping it once. Okay, you can see a lot of packets were captured. Let's look into the upper one, which is for the UDM Pro. See this first packet is from this Linux machine sent to 9999, right? And the interface index 23 is for the LAN part IP address for VLAN 100. And the next packet, it seems it's duplicate, but the interface is different. This time, it's the bridge 100, which is also for VLAN 100. So these two packets make sense, right? See the third packet, the interface is three. Three is the one part for UDM Pro. All of a sudden, the source IP address is changed to the one part IP address. 10.96. Between these two packets, the masquerade net happened. So now we have hard evidence. The net happened. Why? Because the IP address was translated. Okay, so then in the same way, in the lower part of Wireshark, you can see between this packet and this packet, all of a sudden, the source IP address was translated to the one part IP address of the UXG Pro. Okay, we can also confirm, yes, net happened. So this to Wireshark capturing, confirm, yes, we have the multi-net situation. With no change to any of the one part settings behind the screen, I have already reconfigured the three unified gateways so that the UXG Pro and the UDM Pro will not do net anymore. The configurations have been done. I won't show you the details in this video. Instead, I will have a dedicated video for unified gateways to prevent double net. As you can see in the unified network applications for UXG Pro and UDM Pro, the primary one part settings has zero change, okay? But they are not doing masquerade net anymore. Based on the current situation, if you still judge whether the setup has double net or not, completely based on public IP and the one part IP addresses, you may draw the same conclusion that this setup has double net, right? However, if we redo the ping testing, let me restart Wireshark capturing in the two sessions. Then from the same VLAN 100 Linux machine, let me do the exact same ping. Ping 9999, start it. Okay, now we have dramatically different results. Even though just from the client perspective, it still works, right? It's still successful. However, if you check the captured packet, let's start from the UDM Pro, which is the lowest level unified gateway. The first two packets, they were the same as before. However, see the third packet? The source IP address was not changed at all. It is still the original VLAN 100 Linux IP address. From these captured frames, we can already confirm for UDM Pro, there's no net happening. Okay, if we continue looking to UXG Pro, the exact same situation. There's no address translation at all. However, the end result, the VLAN 100 
still successfully access the internet. Then go back to this diagram. So the current situation is these two gateways, UX3 Pro and the UDM Pro, they do not do net. Only the top level gateway, the EFG, still does net, which means even though I have three unified gateways, the lower two, they are just behaving like routers only. They don't do net. I only have one net device. This setup is a completely one net setup. There's no double net. But at the same time, the one part IP addresses have zero change. Now you can understand why in the beginning I said just by checking the one part IP addresses, you may draw wrong conclusions. Let's right. move on to another very popular way to see whether you have double net situation or not, which is trace route. In this VLAN 100 Linux machine, let me run trace route 8888. Okay, the popular idea is just by running trace route, if you check the very first two hops in double net investigation, or in my case, I have triple net. So if you check the first three hops, if the router IP address, they are all private IP addresses, you have double net, or in my case, triple net situation. So you can see for the first three lines, yes, all the three routers are my different unified gateways, private IP addresses, right? So based on this theory, I do have double net situation. However, remember, I just manually configured the three gateways. Now I only have one net device, right? Which means this approach also draws a wrong conclusion for my particular setup. Why? Because trace route simply reflecting the routing. It has nothing to do with net. It's just in most cases, if your router has private IP address, it's very possible it will also do net. That's why people may use this way to see whether you have double net situation or not. It doesn't work in this setup, right? but the routing won't change at all. I still have the exact same routing. Just want to confirm, even if I have double net situation, I will have the exact same routing result. Let me change my three unified gateways back so that I'm back to the triple net situation. Okay, I'm back to the double net, triple net situation. Now the UX3 Pro and the UDM Pro behave like regular unified gateways. They will do masquerade. Then from the same Linux machine, let me run the exact same command. Let's see whether we have the exact same routing. See, it's successful and the very first three hops, they are the same. It doesn't matter whether the unified gateways do net or not, it won't impact the routing if you set up them correctly. Which means the second way, just by running trace route to tell whether you have double net or not, is also not reliable way. As a conclusion, what I really want to say for this video is, if you do not have access to your gateways management UI, you may not have very good way to see whether they do net or not just by checking the one part IP addresses or by running trace route. Neither of them is very reliable to really see whether you have net or not. The most trustable way is to do packet capturing. Okay, this ends the video. Thanks for watching.